Hey, welcome to the Backyard Professor Kitchen Videos. Yeah, you're in the Backyard Professor's Kitchen now, baby. Cooking with the Backyard Professor. Alright, so you have a common theme here. We all have leftovers. Yeah, what do you do with leftovers to spice them up? Because usually they are never as good the second time as they are the first time. Unfortunately for all of you guys, I have the world's best cook in a wife, so my leftovers, and I'm stone cold serious, they are delicious days and days and days later, even after they get all the mold and conge on them. Yeah, just slap them in the microwave, heat them up, and gobble it down. Okay, I'm exaggerating slightly, but what do you do with leftovers? I've got some leftovers I'm going to stomp up here. However, first, I'm going to unhook my camera from the tripod because you know how all the other professional videos do this. They, they take you around their kitchen and they, they show you getting in the fridge and all that sort of crap and in the spice cabinet back over here to find the right spices and all that. I'm going to do that so that mine look as cool as theirs. So hang on, I'm going to disconnect this camera and then we're going to grab some stuff. What I'm going to do today and I know there's a lot of us that do this. I mean, I, I don't do it as often as I used to, but I do have a couple of them right now. You know how you buy the pre-prepared foods? So that when you come home from work, you're tired and your poor wife, it's a hot day and your poor wife doesn't want to cook and you can't argue with that impeccable logic. So you say, okay, I'll just grab a quick microwavable dinner, right? Well, these things they call Hot Pockets, they're okay, right? I, they're nothing spectacular, but I have a couple of them. And I have some leftover pea with a chicken base and chicken sort of soup with mushroom and uh, onions, and it is so good. But it's not enough for a full lunch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take bits and pieces of food here, bits and pieces of food there, and I'm going to try to put it all together and spice up the frozen food, pre-prepared pre food that is truly just crap coming out of the store. You don't have to just heat it and eat it. You can actually build it up to something quite delicious. That's what today's gonna be. Because it is Labor Day. It is 1.20 in the afternoon and I haven't eaten yet today. Yeah, I'm trying to lose a little weight because I'm a fat slob. No, no, I'm not a fat slob, but I am overweight, so I'm working on it. So, hang on and I'll be right back. Don't you even turn that channel. Oh wait, that was the old days of television. Don't touch that remote! Yeah, that'll work too. I'll be right back. Just hang on, be patient with me, will ya? We're having fun in the kitchen today. Yeah, baby. Do, 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 do. Okay, we've got our hot pockets. Now we're gonna find some other ingredients to cook along with them. Come on with me for cooking hot pockets. Okay, I forgot a really important ingredient in the refrigerator. Uh, let's see. Not sauerkraut, although that might be good. These right here. Bacon crumbles. Yeah, we want some of those. Bacon crumbles. Absolutely. We're going to add those to the hot pockets. Hold on, we got the hot pockets. Ooh, look at that ham steak I'm going to have for breakfast in the morning. Yo, that's a good looking steak right there. Uh, rice, no. Peaches, no, I don't. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here is the soup right there. Yeah, we're going to put some of this together. And now we want, I'm going to, uh, we want to do, we want to fry up these hot pockets. Here's the cheese, smoked sausage. We don't want the smoked sausage. Okay, the mozzarella, Joe. I want mozzarella. Right there, right there. Shred it. See, that's the mozzarella. 
there's the shredded mozzarella, and there's the block mozzarella, but I don't want to do any shredding today because I'm being lazy. So the mozzarella cheese that's already shredded. Excellent! It's looking good. So we open up this part of the... Got the butter here. You know what? I might be kind of fun with... I don't want the... No, I don't want the cherries. Ooh, chocolate. Chocolate would be good. No, chocolate would not be good. I'm going to do some sunflower seeds. Why not? A few sunflower seeds. Look, if you can't experiment in the kitchen, then what's the point, right? Yeah. Yeah, so let's do this. Do I have any uh, pickles, barbecue sauce, mesquite sauce? Ooh, strawberry jam. Let's see. Pickles. Smoke sauce. Ooh, jalapeno mustard. I might put some jalapeno mustard on. There's my mayonnaise and ketchup. No, I don't want mayonnaise and ketchup right now. Vanilla extract. Nope. Okay. So, one last thing we do is we come over to the spice cabinet over here and let's take a look. Maple syrup. No, I don't. Rice vinegar. No, I don't want that. Don't want that. Ooh, honey. That might. Makes it sweet though, huh? I want that, uh, no, that's black pepper. Chicken bouillon cubes are good. There, 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 there. Monterey, Montreal. There it is. Montreal steak seasoning. And I know you say, wait, you put that on steak. That's right. But they have steak inside these hot pockets here. So that might be good seasoning once I fry up these put the cheese on with the bacon crumbles and then the seeds and then put the seasoning on. Remember, this is an experiment, baby, yeah! Okay, now I want to come in here to get one of these pans. I've hung my pans on the wall because it's much easier to, it kind of gives it an old home, old-fashioned home look. That one looks big enough. Besides, they're hard to store, right? You want to grab your pan. Yeah, baby. There's the pan. Stick it on the stove, and we're about ready to rumble, baby. Okay, so I got to confess here. I'm going to put these on a plate. Got to pop them out of the... You know how they, they give you this stupid little wrapper to crisp them up and all that? Toss that. Toss that. That's just a waste of time. Those never work, ever, ever. What you want to do is put these on a plate for a moment. And I confess, I'm going to use the old microwave. I put them in the microwave for, oh, about uh, a minute uh, 38. That sounds like a lucky number, yeah. Minute 38. What we're going to do is warm these up, and then they'll be ready for the fry pan. Okay, so you want to turn on your stove. I don't, I'm not going to fry these at especially high. I use gas. Um, I'm going to cook them at about three and a half. You want to warm up your, you want to warm up your pan and uh, stick some butter in there. I know, butter's fattening. Shut up and live with it, they say. So here we go. And I just do just a small dollop. Nothing major. Put the butter in there. It sounds like the uh, microwave beeped. So I'll pull these little babies out of the microwave and we shall get this thing going. Now you can yeah, they're just they're just soft. Now the frost is out of them. Now that now the uh, the hard the hard freeze is out of them. And I like to put the first one in there and spin it around in the pan a little bit. Spread the butter out. You know, you gotta do this like a pro. And then what I want to do is just basically fry these up to where they're a light brown. And yeah, they look kind of brown and they probably put all kinds of false chemicals and crap in them to turn them brown in that stupid, ridiculous microwave cover you're supposed to use them in. But this is a much better way to do it. At this point, first, just simply crisp these up a little bit. That's one of the first steps. Okay, after about a couple of minutes, I like to just swirl them around, make sure all the butter 
is evenly distributed and I don't want them to stick but I don't want them to get too brown so I check them that's not bad that's not bad but I can do better so I want them just a little bit more brown whoops come over here kid okay um, and I'm on like a three and a half to four heat nothing major and high let that sit for another minute or so and then I'll flip them over for about a minute they have a dome cover or a dome curve to it not a big deal they'll probably brown more in the middle than on the sides it doesn't matter okay so we've been about another minute minute and a half so it's a total of maybe three minutes or so I know we're all used to fast food tough this is better uh, but I just kind of like having a golden brown not not really dark not too light not too dark it kind of helps crisp the uh, junk that they wrap around the good stuff in these so we'll we'll heat these on this want to swirl them around again make sure there's plenty of butter on that side uh, I want to heat these for another oh you know minute and a half or so the insides are already probably pretty warm right now so it's all good okay now why while they're heating on this side with the with the dome see they're already almost done in fact they are done on that side darn it I wanted to okay here's what I'm gonna do here is what I'm gonna do I'm going to put the cheese on right now sprinkle the cheese oh no 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 I'm gonna do the uh, Montreal steak seasoning I want to sprinkle ooh not much oh wow that's ten times too much oh well and then ooh boy you can sure smell it though it smells good and then I want to do just a few sunflower seeds nothing major and then I want to put the cheese plenty of cheese heap much cheese you must put on cheese on this yeah we want the cheese to be on there and melt real good because the cheese they put in these is not all that good and then I want to turn it down just a little Ooh, you can smell that cooking can't you now move them around just a little yeah yeah get that cheese in there I should just microwave this cheese on that shouldn't I be so much simpler and then what we'll do I put some sunflower seeds underneath and then I will put sunflower seeds over it after it melts I may have to put that in the uh, in the microwave and then I'll put the bacon crumbles in fact I know I'm gonna have to put that in the microwave I can smell it it's done on the bottom okay so I thought I was gonna be able to melt this in the pan and I'm not going to be able to so I will put this on a plate like I said this is just fast quick and dirty and then I like to scrape all that good stuff off of the pan and put it directly on this too don't waste any of this man those are sunflower seeds and nothing better than cooked cheese yeah baby that's a good program right there anyway I'm probably being too conservative with this let's do a microwave zap real quick on that shall we so I've got my plate put it in the microwave shut the door and let's do it for I just want that cheese to melt so 40 44 seconds should be plenty to melt that cheese and what that'll do is it'll cement down those sunflower seeds I've got the Montreal steak seasoning on there once the cheese melts I'll top it with the bacon with the bacon and uh, and then I've got another little spice that I want to put on that I really love put the scissors away I had to cut the package open with the cheese ooh, 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 yeah 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 with the cheese like that we're gonna put just a few more uh, sunflower seeds not much not much then we're gonna put the bacon on these bacon chips because uh, bacon bits I mean you just be quiet, please. My puppy smells this bacon and she's saying, Yeah, Dad's cooking again. I want some of that good stuff. Now the bacon bit you want to keep in the fridge. 
And I like to top that heavy with bacon. I can't help it. I like bacon, you know. And I kind of tap it down. Tap it down in the cheese. Right? And then if you're a real sadist, you could put some more cheese and melt it and really have a cheesy dinner. <laughs> in a cheesy video. Yeah, a cheesy dinner for cheesy video. Okay, I'm going to put the rest of these in the fridge and I'll be right back. You know what? I lied. I am going to do a little bit more cheese. Not much. Just to hold those bacon bits on. And the puppy wants a couple pieces of cheese, so I give it to her. Yeah, i got to break this up a little bit. Kind of comes in clumps in some of these packages. It mashes back up all together, so put it over there. It's like a miniature pizza pocket, except it's better. Mmm. Okay, I'm going to throw this in the microwave real quick. Hey, it just dawned on me. Why don't I put some sharp cheddar on there, too? Yeah, mozzarella and a little bit of sharp cheddar on there. I have a variety of cheeses on this. Yeah, there we go. That's a good idea. That's looking good there, isn't it? Yum. So, see, there's ways to build up these chintzy, pre <coughs> oh, quiet, pre-prepared meals from the freezer in Walmart and Costco and all to where they're actually a decent lunch. And it's not that tough. I've been at this, what, eight minutes? Okay, so let's take our dish here with the two different cheeses. Pop it back in the microwave. And, you know, I've got two different cheeses on there. 30, 33 seconds should suffice. And in case we didn't... Uh, in case we didn't soften it up enough the first time in the microwave with these pockets for uh, the two minutes beforehand, uh, this constant remelding of the cheeses will do it, and they'll be plenty warm inside. They won't be frozen. All in all, you've got about three and a half minutes in the microwave, which is what the original recipe calls for in the first place with those stupid chinchy crisp pocket deals that never work. Okay, let's take a look at our product. Uh, not quite. It's, it's somewhat melted, but I can do a little bit better. That's looking good and it's smelling good. I'm going to go another 22 seconds. The cheese did come out of the fridge after all. And this will make sure that this little baby is ready to go. Yeah, this is looking and smelling fabulous, man. So these chintzy cheese pockets, you can build them up to make them really quite a delicious little meal. Yeah, 22 seconds left, and bingo! Yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, it's even bubbling. And now you can see it mixed in with the other cheese. Now, doesn't that look a lot more appetizing and delicious? You know, there's sunflower seeds in there, Montreal steak seasoning, two different kinds of cheeses, and bacon bits on top of the cheese pockets. Now that's a meal. In fact, my dog's barking for some. It's so good. Yeah, that looks fabulous. And now finally, the final spice. I want to put just a little bit of cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper does not have to be hot. Just realize you're not going to burn your tongue by adding cayenne pepper. It enhances the flavor and it's very nutritious. So what we want to do is bump just a little bit, not much, just enough for the flavor. What it does is it spices up your taste buds so that you really have a good flavor experience. And after all, that's what cooking is all about, a good flavor experience. All right, let's try this dish. Now, I just made this up on the fly. I've never done this with these Hot Pockets before, this kind of a combination. So this is new to me too. So let's check it out. Let's see how it works. Oh, 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 ha, ha, ha. <coughs> oh, wow. Cheese is hot. Cheese is hot. Oh, mm. oh boy, that's good though. Mm. Oh, that is really good. Woo! 
<laughs> look at that cheese stretch, yeah? Look at that cheese stretch. Oh yeah, that's the mozzarella. Wind it and 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 wind it. Yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Blow on it just a little bit. Oh, that's good. I can taste the, uh, yeah, the little bit of cayenne in that. That's good. Oh, yum. Yeah, cayenne and, uh, what did I put in here? Uh, sunflower seeds, cayenne, a couple of different kind of, uh, you can buy different uh, varieties and flavors of the Hot Pockets. These particular Hot Pockets were the steak, and they're just thin sliced pieces. Of I mean, they're paper thin. They're just chintzy as all get out. And they put like two of them in there. <laughs> so you can add with the bacon that really helps it. And then that Montreal uh, steak flavor, believe it or not, that is really good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know. Sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, man. Hey, that's good. Oh, the cayenne brings it out real good. So, there's another quick, um, easy lunch fixings for you. I don't think I spent 15 minutes at it. And to enhance the frozen food section from your local grocery store and show them how they should have done it, but you can do it yourself, which makes a more full meal, more nutritious meal, and bite far more delicious and filling. So, there's your Backyard Professor chess, or chess, yeah, chess video, chef video, yeah, yeah, baby, working with uh, fast foods and, and frozen foods and all that jazz. Ooh, ooh, mm. warm, warm, ooh, yeah, microwave that makes it warm. So, Oh boy, that's good. Be good, do well, have fun. Thanks for coming over. Thanks for watching my video. I will get more chess videos up. I will do more philosophy videos. And, yeah baby, next weekend, I'll do another cooking video for you. Just for kicks and giggles. Because food's fun. Food preparation is fun. And food eating is really fun. I promise. I'm an expert at that the eating part. <laughs> Alright you guys, be happy. Have fun. See you next time.